All right, now we're rocking. All right, hey everybody and welcome. We're gonna talk about female hormones. And I wanna thank Drs. Data for giving me the opportunity to speak. I was just speaking to one of my teachers, uh, Dr. Richard Lord, who worked at Doctors Data in the 1970s. Now, this company goes way, way back. And so these illustrious labs, we wanna support them because they are the ones that created our profession. So I have a lot of respect for these lab companies. It's not an easy business to be in and they go through a lot of hassles to deliver us really accurate data. And I've always been a lab guy. So anyways, I, I really appreciate these lab companies being supporter for our, our community. And in this case, we're gonna be talking about female hormones and I uh, will skip here through a couple of slides. This is about me. Uh, well, those of you that don't know me at all, I've been involved in functional medicine since around 1992. I've done some research projects with Mayo Clinic, worked with them for a while. I'm working, as I mentioned, with Richard Lord now, developing more advanced lab curriculum, been in practice for a long time, IFM certified. I'm on the IFM faculty. I teach their practice implementation workshops and um, really enjoy like primarily focusing on developing lab interpretation skills so people can have super successful businesses. That's my niche right now and trying to remove the roadblocks that get people in trouble that make it hard for them to have the confidence to interpret these labs. And then we have a special offer that my staff put together with Doctors Data, which is 20% off our telehealth masterclass. And this, I've been in doing a telehealth practice uh, for 15, 16 years now, and I haven't seen a patient in person since I can remember, to be honest, it's been a long, long time. And yet now, uh, for obvious reasons, telehealth is becoming super popular. So I, I set up this course, which is based on my experience of having done this for so long, um, and the joys of working on the phone or through a telehealth, telemedicine practice, and trying to just show you all the things that I've... It, interestingly, my teacher, Dr. Timmons, only exclusively worked on the phone, too. He never saw patients in his clinic. And that's going back like 30, 35, 40 years. He was, a little ahead of his time, I guess. So I learned functional medicine walk, watching Bill work on the phone. And then when I started my practice, I incorporated it. And then I sold my clinic a while ago. So I think a lot of you are interested perhaps in developing a part-time telemedicine clinic and still working in your clinic. And some of you may want to go to full-time. So anyways, this masterclass is designed to help give you a little push in that direction and give you some ideas, a lot of scripts that I use in terms of how to conduct new patient interviews, a big emphasis on how to sell lab kits to make sure that you can do that process really smoothly, how to do follow-up lab testing, those kinds of things. Anyway, so if you're interested, you can check that out and you get 20% off courtesy of doctor's data. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about progesterone and uh, female hormones and how they are disrupted. And so, when I was in, uh, still in school in 1992, I went to a conference in Oakland, California on menopause. And it was maybe like five or six speakers. And the keynote speaker was this man named Dr. John R. Lee, who at that time was the guy on progesterone. And he's a medical doctor, he's long since died. He wrote a whole series of books called What Your Doctor May Not Tell You About dot, dot, dot. And at the... <laughs> I was like in my late 20s and I walked into this room. There's like well over a thousand people. I can remember counting and thinking, wow, there's a lot of people here. It was, there was like five or six men and everybody besides me was over the age of 50 because it was a you know patient presentation for the public. It wasn't for doctors. And I just sat through this thing and I was just thinking, wow, this is so awkward. But anyways, I charged up at the end of the talk and I went on stage and I walked up to Dr. Lee and I said, that's the most amazing thing I've ever heard. You're an amazing person. And he said, here's my phone number, kid, you know, call me when you get a chance. And Dr. Lee became my first teacher on progesterone. And boy, what an experience. We spent two or three years together going over every single case. And he really taught me all that I knew about pro progesterone that those first 10 or so years. So I want to convey that information to you guys today too. And this is information that goes back to the 1970s and John Lee's research and his practice and clinical application of using progesterone and um, hasn't changed a whole lot. You know, there's a lot of new research on it, I'm sure, but you know, we're still doing similar things as, as Dr. Lee was doing back in the 1970s that he taught me. So focusing on progesterone, now we're doing the labs. Okay, that's a big new change. There's more accurate lab data. You know, but the treatments, again, are going to be pretty similar and wanting to make sure that you guys are super comfortable doing this. So you just see a patient, your progesterone is necessary. Oof, you do it. 
move on to the next patient. Don't give it a second thought. I know in the mentorship class this morning, there was a new doctor in, in the class and she was like, I'm really hesitating to use the progesterone. I'm like hesitating, why? <laughs> There's very few side effects. It's almost all just goodness. And if you see low levels, you can expect anywhere from mild to moderate to amazing benefit. And very, very few times are you gonna see negative consequences of using progesterone. So we wanna maybe show you some of the patterns that you're gonna see, give you an idea about programs that can help reset, and then talk a little bit also about some of the underlying causes for progesterone problems. And you rarely see that progesterone is a problem in isolation from the rest of the body. That's really unusual. Usually there's some emotional and spiritual disconnection, some dietary problem. Maybe they're sensitive to gluten. Maybe they have three GI infections. We had a patient this morning with diantamoeba, diantamoeba fragilis, blastocystis, and some other, oh, and endolamics nano, all on the stool test. So that's going to cause a hormone problem, right? If you're that inflamed, and that, that's much, that much went on your gut. Toxin-related issues, clogging up the liver are going to mess up the hormones. We'll talk about how that manifests as well. Um, so you can have these underlying causes, and that can end up affecting the female hormones. But you always also want to not only correct the hormones, but, you know, have more than just a cursory look at the underlying cause. You actually wanna fix the underlying cause. So we wanna talk a little bit about that. So we're gonna start off getting into the progesterone and the treatments while you guys are still fresh and your minds are crisp. And then we'll fade out in the second part and get into GI and detox. And then we'll cover some lab examples and then Q and A, that'll be the basic structure, okay? So this is right out of the Dr. Lee days, this exact picture. Oh, that's a total flashback. I hadn't really thought about that till now. Anyways, so um, I've been looking at this diagram for almost 30 years, 29 years. So what we're, what we're thinking about here is where are the progesterone levels? You can see progesterone naturally in the beginning of the cycle is very flat. And in fact, a woman's progesterone level at the first part of the month there is similar to a man's level. It's very low. And then ovulation occurs and progesterone has this huge increase, massive increase for the second part of the cycle. And that's what we're trying to map out there. Is there that, is that surge happening? If it's not happening, how can we you know, stimulate the system such that it can happen? And I'll tell you the, I just give you the punchline now because people always want to know treatments and how does this really work. If you see a woman who's still of cycling age, you know, still in a, you know, have a, a normal monthly cycle or should be having a cycle based on her age, and you see that progesterone levels are low, it's very simple. You can give progesterone starting on day 15 of the cycle for two weeks, take a break for two weeks, start again for two weeks. It's basically two weeks in, on, two weeks off, starting around day 15. I have the, my preferences for the types of progesterone that I use. I like the liquids because I find it really easy to dose. You can vary the dose, you know, by drop, you know, where it's easier than the creams are a little problematic to dose. And capsules, you're kind of stuck with one size of a capsule. So I yet like to use the liquids. There's at least three companies I know that carry the liquids that are pretty much equivalent in quality. And the typical dose, depending on which liquid you're using, but for most liquids, it's around 12 drops twice a day starting on day 15. And as complex as these labs can get, that's a basic program you can use with almost any woman. When I was first working with Dr. Lee, those first two or three years, he just gave me the standard protocol and I just used it with every single patient. And then by year five and year 10, I was varying the programs quite a bit. But honestly, the first two or three years, probably how many people I treat, maybe two, 300 people a year. It's probably like almost a thousand people I gave the exact same protocol to. So don't be afraid of using progesterone. Just use the 12 drops twice a day protocol. And then as you develop your skills, you can up it and make it more complex if you want. And then female hormone imbalances encompass so many different things. It might be PMS, but it could be something like hair loss. It could be that the woman just can't sleep or that she wants to get pregnant. There's so many different ways that this can manifest. And depending on the age, if she's 15 or 25 or 35 or 55 or 75, there's gonna be variations in all this. And the solution is so simple and so obvious for these women, they again, just wanna jump in and use the progesterone as soon as you have lab values that show that they need it. I think you very rarely be caught out and have a negative response to it, you know, very rare. And if you do have a negative response to progesterone, it usually means that their liver is not working very well, which is the later part of the talk we're gonna look at in a minute. So causes of female hormone imbalances, 
obviously stress and diet and all that stuff we always talk about, but GI tract tissue inflammation drives hormones way bonkers. So if your body's inflamed because your gut's not working very well, you're going to have disruption of conversion of T4 to T3. You're going to have high cortisol. You're going to get a little bit off with your estrogen. Progesterone is going to get involved. So the more stress there is on the system, whether it's emotional or inflammatory, the more problems you're going to have with the hormones. And similarly, if your body can't clear hormones effectively, if the liver is not working well, then you're going to have a problem with hormones. And if you have a high level of exposure to toxins, to endocrine disruptors, sometimes they're called, toxins that are potentially going to stimulate an estrogen-like response, hit estrogen receptors and do all kinds of things that throw people off, you're also going to have issues. So the cleaner that the liver is and the better it's working, the better the hormone processing will be, the better that the gut is working, the fewer hormone problems they're going to have. And if you can get the emotional stress and dietary stress under control, so obviously it's impossible to do all those things at the same time. And I always prioritize hormones. So I always treat hormones in the very beginning of a program, even while we're still working on getting the GI 360 test back and figuring out what's going on with your gut, getting their toxin test back and figuring out what phase one and phase two liver detox you're doing. So you can, I always do, and this may be based on Dr. Lee's impact. I always use progesterone in the very beginning of a program if it's indicated, I never wait, but we know that there's underlying causes that we're gonna address, but the progesterone will still be extremely effective in the very beginning and can lead to so much relief. It's like, why the heck not do it, you know? And so we also just wanna think through that there are all these other hormones we're not really gonna talk about. We'll talk about the adrenals when we look at the labs, but you also wanna always check thyroid, et cetera. So, if you want to keep it simple, for women who are still menstruating, it's this two weeks on, two weeks off, 12 drops twice a day of liquid progesterone. And for women who are postmenopausal, assuming again that the labs show that there's a problem, which they usually will show, then you can use progesterone either by itself, that's very commonly done, or some doctors will use progesterone and a plant-based estrogen together. Okay, you can see all the different pathways that you can hit with these things. And then as an underlying treatment, we also test and correct the adrenals, oftentimes using pregnenolone, which is the precursor to cortisol, and DHEA. And DHEA happens to be the precursor to estrogen and testosterone. So most of the time, their programs involve pregnenolone and DHEA with some extra progesterone. And if needed, and the woman's, you know, let's say over the age of 50, 55, sometimes some plant-based estrogen, but you'd be amazed. We were talking about this in class just like a month ago. There's an OBGYN in my class named Maria. She's had a lot of experience working with women, the hormones. And she's, ah, oh, Dan, I, I hardly ever use estrogen. I'm like, yeah, I'm the same thing. She's like, I just usually give the progesterone and that's usually enough. And who wants to mess with estrogen if you don't have to? Nobody, nobody wants to take estrogen unless they have to. So you will often find a solid adrenal program and some extra progesterone in a woman with a good gut and a good liver will be enough. 50% or more of the symptoms are relieved by addressing the adrenals and the lifestyle factors that go with that. So when I say adrenals, that's kind of code word for diet, exercise, sleep, meditation, all the stress related things. If you can get those under control with a good adrenal program, which involves lifestyle, diet, stress, exercise, meditation, all that's working, you know, usually half or more of the female symptoms are going to be relieved. And then you can come in with your progesterone and estrogen if needed to, you know, make the rest of the program come together. So in terms of patient education, I always try to keep it simple. I'll say estrogen is a growth hormone. Estrogen causes things to grow. Progesterone holds the uterine lining intact should you become pregnant. And progesterone has a lot of really positive effects in that it uh, helps relax blood vessels, it helps the brain heal and repair and work better, helps people sleep, has a lot of natural, beautiful properties to it. And that when we're stressed, estrogen and progesterone can both be impacted, but typically progesterone drops more and drops more rapidly. So you can end up in a situation that uh, it's a term that Dr. Lee coined many years ago called estrogen dominance doesn't necessarily mean your estrogen levels are high. It just means that your progesterone is low and the ratio is off. And so we always want to look at that and correct that. And that's why oftentimes just a progesterone alone is enough to correct the problem. Even if the woman's estrogen dominant, small amounts of progesterone can balance out that whole situation. So when we're looking at the monthly rhythm, again, you can see the beginning of the month, 
progesterone levels are flat, it skyrockets in the second part of the month. And most women are going to have symptoms in the second part of the month because the progesterone is not going up high enough or it's not lasting. Uh, you know, it's rising up and then coming down too quickly. So either it's never getting up to the level it should or it's going up and then coming down too quickly. And there's be some kind of deficit with the uh, progesterone output. Now, DHEA is a wonderful thing to work with with hormones as well. You can test DHEA levels. And if they're low, it's very easy. You just supplement with DHEA. But it is also a precursor to estrogen. So there may be some times when you don't want to use it or you want to be cautious with using it. If there's, for example, a history of estrogen-related cancer or any hormone-related cancer, you probably don't want to use hormones like DHEA. But for most women, it can be extremely effective and can, I don't know, you kind of cover over. It makes it seem like you're covering something up. But it can sort of smooth over estrogen-related migraines or estrogen-related symptoms. The DHEA has a way of sort of pacifying the problems that estrogen can generate. And again, sometimes you'll have patients that have low estrogen, but their progesterone is even lower. So they may be estrogen dominant, quote unquote, but still the DHEA can help them quite a bit, not only with the low DHEA, but also with the low estrogen. And if you're using low dosages of DHEA, the conversion over to estrogen is never a problem or shouldn't be a problem. We're using really small amounts of DHEA to solve these problems. Okay, you also have progesterone converting down into cortisol. So it's understandable that when women are stressed and they make a lot more cortisol, progesterone levels start to drop. You know, And basically I think you'll see on the labs, the more stress they're under, the more, uh, my old patient used to say cattywampus. She was from Texas. She'd always come in and say, I don't know, my back is kind of cattywampus. The more cattywampus, the more like out of balance the cortisol is, the more likely you're going to see progesterone problems. And the most perfect way to solve this, and this works, you know, the vast majority of times is to do the cortisol program with DHEA and pregnenolone, low dosages of DHEA and pregnenolone, and then layer on top of that, the progesterone. And that's for women of all ages, that works really well. The low, the DHEA, that if it's low, right, will help boost up or balance out anything that's going on with estrogen. And the cortisol program that you do using pregnenolone will help address the low progesterone. So you can do all these things in concert together and it works quite well. And this is my reminder to talk about thyroid slide because there are all these complex interactions between the HPA axis and how the brain and the adrenals are communicating and how, what the thyroid is doing. And the more stress that we're under, the more cortisol that we make, the more disrupted the thyroid can become as well. And then there are also direct connections between thyroid and progesterone. So we're not talking about thyroid a lot right now because we're showing you some different labs, but the assumption is that you're also going to test and correct thyroid as part of this. If you have a situation where both the adrenals and thyroid are out of balance, I have found in general, and this is something that was taught to me, I haven't found this, but I found what I was taught to be true, that if I go after the adrenal program first, the vast majority of time, the thyroid starts to re-regulate. There are some people who obviously have what we call a primary thyroid problem, and even fixing their adrenals and fixing their adrenals members code word for diet, exercise, sleep, and meditation. So even fixing their lifestyle and their adrenals doesn't correct the thyroid, then of course we would go after thyroid treatments also. But many times with an adrenal program with Preg and DHEA, maybe there's some progesterone in it too, along with diet, exercise, sleep, and meditation is enough to start to re-regulate the thyroid. And if not, then it's something you, know, you can address separately as needed. And here are the different pathways for those of you that like pathways. I think they're interesting. Uh, interesting thing about this slide is that all this stuff comes from cholesterol. Well, fascinating, right? Because cholesterol is not bad. So cholesterol is how we produce all the steroid hormones. And then you have to have uh, acetyl-CoA. Um, and the CoA part of acetyl-CoA is vitamin B5. So B5 becomes an extraordinary of, uh, becomes of extraordinary importance in these kinds of programs. You wanna make sure you give B vitamins sometimes with some extra B5. And when we're stressed, all of these things go wrong. And one of the keys that I found to success with these kind of programs is using pregnenolone. It's not a very commonly used supplement. Um, in fact, you really never hear people talking about it, but it's, I don't know, it's in my top three favorite products of all time. And I use it frequently if there's an adrenal problem and it really helps. 
smooth out these disconnections that occur between the stress response and the adrenals and the female hormones. It's a really wonderful product and uh, probably should be used more, but it's just really not discussed very often. Maybe people don't think about it. I'm not sure why, but anyways, it's something that I was trained in and I've used frequently. Uh, also very rare to have side effects from pregnenolone. And it's also so effective in so many different ways for sleep problems, energy problems, fertility problems. It's just one of my go-to products. Um, it's not very expensive. It's easy to get a, your hands on and, and it works really well. Okay. Uh, so there's different patterns that you see if you look at these labs day and night for a while. So one is that there's a distribution, you can have distribution problem. Uh, the other is that you can have, meaning it's just not being produced at the right times, whatever the hormone is, progesterone or estrogen. You can also just have low production, low production of the hormone. And then sometimes, and we had a case like this uh, this week in class, um, you can have ovulation or timing issues. This example we had earlier in the week when the doctor submitted was a woman who was ovulating on day eight instead of on day 12. And that's four days early out of 12, right? So it's hard, and it's a fertility case, hard to get pregnant if you're ovulating on day eight. And so you want to, you can correct those kind of ovulation and timing issues. You can correct the low progesterone or low estrogen issues, and you can correct the distribution problems with similar programs. I mean, this is kind of the funny part of all this is I, if I think back on the Dr. Lee years, I would call him on every new patient he would basically tell me to do the same thing every time, but for different reasons. He would explain why, but he would, but the, the end of the conversation was always like, what should I do, Dr. Lee? And he would always say, well, I think she needs progesterone. And I would say, how much? And then he would say, I think 20 milligrams twice a day. And I would say, when? And he would say, for the last two weeks of her cycle. I mean, like pretty much every single time. So I was using that protocol or program over and over and over again. That's why you can jump in and do this because, I mean, I did this. And I, my whole practice was built around progesterone. The first 10 years of my practice, all I did was Dr. Lee's work and prescribe progesterone and adrenal programs to everybody. That was basically the whole first decade of my clinical career. And it works incredibly well. And then as the years rolled by, I started to learn these things I'm talking about now. But you absolutely don't need to pay attention to these details to get good results, okay? But at some point, you should learn this stuff. So we're going to talk about it. Um, so you can have a distribution problem. This usually happens when the adrenals are first starting to get exhausted. Maybe the cortisol is super high now. They're making enough progesterone, but it's not quite at the right time. So the ovaries are still kind of doing the right thing, but they're a little bit out of sync. Then if that person gets worse, then we'll see this low production problem. Now there's actually not enough progesterone being made. There's not enough estrogen being made. These people usually take longer to correct. And then you can also have a timing issue. That would be estrogen spiking too early or estrogen spiking too late. So they either have an early ov ovulation or a late ovulation. And of course, you see this a lot with women who are trying to get pregnant and can't. And again, pretty straightforward and easy to correct. Um, you'll see different types of symptoms, you know, when there's a distribution problem early on. It's typically PMS and they won't be complaining that much. When the levels are low all the time, they'll have symptoms that are low all month long. You know, like there may be a bad memory, but it's not just bad memory for a few days, it's bad memory every day, or they might have low libido and it's all the time. And then when there's timing problems, that's more of a fertility issue. And so on the, the summary of this, before we get into the gut and the toxin part, it's pretty straightforward to correct these programs for Women who are still cycling, you just look at the basic lab if they're low, two weeks on, two weeks off, two weeks on, two weeks off. You can start to fill in you know, the details later. Um, that will help move ovulation to be at the right time. It'll help stimulate production to come back. It'll help with the uh, uh, distribution problems. All of those are solved. And so as much as I've gotten into these more advanced labs, looking at female hormones, you end up doing pretty basic programs for most women. It's very rare that a woman needs a completely unique program. That would maybe be more like a complicated uh, fertility case, you know? But if you're doing the adrenal programs with the progesterone, and we'll look at some adrenal labs in a minute too, you're gonna be in pretty good shape. So I'm gonna talk just for a moment. I got a ton of slides here, but I just wanna rattle through them kind of quickly because I just don't want you to think that it's only progesterone that's really involved. And that, you know, just emphasize that there are inflammatory issues from either gut problems or toxin related problems that are gonna disrupt all these hormones. 
And then I think about it in systems. So a neuroendocrine system, a GI system, and a detox system. And the GI system impacts the neuroendocrine, and the detox system impacts the neuroendocrine. And that if we want a complete solution, we want to deal with all three systems. And these are what I use for patient education purposes. So when looking at digestive health, this is a little scary, but statistic from a new study, 40% of people in the world have functional GI disorders throughout the whole world. It's not just here in the United States. 80,000 chemicals have been released into the environment. That's not a good thing. So, you know, the bottom line is that a lot of the people that we work with have both digestive problems and toxin related problems. And so you want to learn how to address those as part of the overall female hormone issue. And again, the more gut inflammation there is, the more likely they're going to have a hormone imbalance because it's the inflammation that's destroying T4 conversion to T3. It's the inflammation that's driving cortisol up because it's an anti-inflammatory. It's the inflammation that's messing with the estrogen. Or in other cases where it's toxin related, it's the toxin that's clogging up the liver so the liver can't break down hormones very well. Or it's the endocrine disruptor that's not being cleared by the liver that's mimicking estrogen in a very negative way and exacerbating this estrogen dominance problem. So those are kind of the variables that we want to look at. The GI issues that generate inflammation, functional heartburn, this is from that study that I was citing there, reflux, hypersensitivity, nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea. You will see, and I really... I, I realized this around year 10 or 12, that the more serious the gut problem was, the more damaged the hormone system was. And I, and I saw that and it became kind of obvious. And then I thought, oh, I wonder if that's always true. And I've been tracking this now for like another 20 years. This is pretty consistent. You will not see very many women, and I never have, you will not see a woman whose hormones are totally dysregulated that has a perfect microbiome and that has great lifestyle factors. I just don't think you're gonna see that. So we wanna think about the hormones as a response team, as a response system to these various other issues. And so for the GI, we're thinking about diet, stress, sleep, relationships, detail, all the lifestyle things that would disrupt the microbiome. Once the microbiome is disrupted, which you will see on the labs, the GI360 reveals this better than any other lab. I think they have more commensal bacterial markers on that test than anyone else in the industry right now. So it's sort of the lead microbiome analysis tool that we have. I think there's 54, someone can correct me later from Dr. Data. I think there's 54 commensal markers on there. The other competitors have maybe six or 10 or 12, 20-ish, you know, so they have more than double. So you're getting a really good look at the microbiome. And if it's a problem there, you need to address it. And then you can also have what I call stage two. Right now, the organs are involved, the GI organs, the stomach's not working right, or the pancreas, the gallbladder is not working right. Maybe the immune system in the small intestine is not working. And that's sort of a next step problem that you also need to address to make, you know, pancreatic enzymes for the pancreas or bile support for the gallbladder, whatever, or maybe some leaky gut repair for the small intestine, whatever's going on there. And then what I call stage three is now this has progressed even more. Now you've got a gut infection. You've got a, not just a disrupted microbiome and some GI organ issues, but now you've got your crypto, giardia, e-histo, H. pylori, something's going on that's an infection that you need to treat. And the more progressed the woman is in these stages, the more severe her hormone imbalances typically become. And so we always do the lab testing, GI 360, state of the art, and figure out how's the microbiome, how's the uh, gut absorption, what are the organs doing, you know, is everything okay? And then what's going on in terms of infections? Okay, so that's the gut in a nutshell. And in my practice, like we, and this is what we teach at the Kalos Institute too, for all the mentorship students. It's pretty simple. You do a hormone panel or two, you know, to make sure you're checking all the hormones. You do the microbiome test, the gut test, and then you do some kind of nutritional evaluation. I like to do organic acids, so I do organic acids, but there's other options out there for that. But you test those three body systems, right? Neuroendocrine, GI, and detox with those tests. And you got it made. On every new patient, you don't vary it. You know, you don't have like one set of labs if she's a fertility case, and then a different set of labs if she has hormone-related migraines. It's just neuroendocrine, GI, and detox testing on everybody. That's the basic workup and works really well. So this is uh, the fourth report. And something 
I don't know, someday if you're in a good mood and I don't know, something just really good happened to you, maybe you got a tax return you didn't expect, or you just bought a new car, or I was going to say you had a baby, but if you have a baby, you're exhausted, you probably don't feel great. Something really great happens to you and you're in a good mood. You should Google CDC's fourth report and just bring yourself down <laughs> to reality. This is the most depressing document ever created by humankind. It's hundreds and hundreds of pages of the CDC studying year after year after year human exposure to environmental chemicals. I mean, just the list of chemicals that they're testing people for would take you two or three hours to read through. It's like a book, just the list of what they're looking at, let alone, anyways, the, what, the point of this is that they, the government's been tracking this for a long time. And they're looking at different ethnic groups, different regions, different chemicals, and just watching the American population get more and more toxic year by year by year. And they up to here, updated tables, March 2021. Every year they're updating this and every year it's getting worse and worse for women and men and children and people of every ethnicity. All the numbers are looking bad. In fact, now, if you look at the CDC information, pretty much every single American has somewhere around 122 to maybe as many as four to 500 known toxins in their body at any one time. And a lot of these toxins act as endocrine disruptors, which means they interfere with the normal flow and, and functioning of your hormones. Many of the toxins, and probably almost all of them, impact your liver detox pathways. And you need to, you know, to run your liver detox pathways to clear hormones. And so hormone levels in the body are a combination of production, what the organ's making, what your ovaries are making, what your adrenals are making, what your thyroid's making, combining that with clearance rates. And so it's not just the amount of hormone being produced, but it's how well the liver's breaking down the hormone and clearing it that counts in our total sort of balance of hormone function, okay? And so the more gunked up the liver is, the more environmental toxins are causing problems, the more endocrine disruptors there are, the more problems you're gonna have with your hormones. Now, I'm just going to zip through these slides, and this is so depressing that we're not even going to see anything. We could just have a moment of silence, maybe. Oh, my gosh. And they all have, like, these three letters, BPA, D, oh, it's just bad, bad, bad. Oh, these guys are, every one of these reminds me of a patient. I have a really mercury toxic patient right now. Oh, my gosh, that's not good either. Oh, and I had one today that was uh, ammonia toxic. And then where do we get all these things? Who knows? It's from the air. It's from the water. You can read about this. There's home-related chemicals. That come. It's basically everyone all throughout the planet now has some level of toxin burden. So that's the depressing part. You can measure for all this, though, and make sure that they can clear environmental toxins from their body. That's an essential part of doing a hormone program. And if you're not doing that, then even giving them the treatment could be risky. You know, when you see people that have poor reactions to the hormones we're talking about using, like DHEA or pregnenolone or progesterone, the vast majority of time, they're having that poor reaction because their liver is so toxic, they can't handle the treatment. So you want to figure this out ahead of time, if only to avoid side effects. And unhealthy liver, that's really what we're talking about. So there's two phases, phase one and phase two. You can measure these. And the solutions are relatively straightforward. There's certain nutrients for phase one, different ones for phase two. And the phases look something like this. Cytochrome P450 enzymes through phase one, breaking down the, or the, breaking down the hormone or breaking down the toxin. Phase two sweeps it up and gets rid of it. And you're going to excrete then the toxins through stool, sweat, or urine. If this whole system's working well, then you've got it made. If it's not, then you have to stop and fix it for two reasons. One is you want to get the endocrine disruptors out of the tissues so they're not interfering with the normal functioning of hormones, the chemicals that are acting as endocrine disruptors. And number two, you want the body to be able to process the treatments that you're going to give plus the current hormones that are being produced so there's some equanimity right, to the whole situation there and you're not going to cause problems with your treatments. And then... If that wasn't enough, you can also have a combo thing going on. So, and you know, usually life is a little murky, isn't it? Usually it's not so black and white. You learn this as you get older, that everything's kind of a gray area. In your teens and twenties, it seems like everything's black and white. And I think when you're initially learning to be a practitioner of integrative medicine, there's so many possibilities of everything going wrong with everything else and this meaning that, 
that you kind of force yourself. I think I've seen most of my colleagues do this to look at things in a more black and white way, just so you can get your practice started and you don't get overwhelmed with every decision you're going to make. Kind of like me calling Dr. Lee and him telling me, oh, give progesterone. And, you know, me always asking when, and just to him, it was just like, yeah, you just do this. It's his protocol, just do this. And so I adopted that and was able to, you know, get through a decade of treating hormones because I was really consistent in the protocols and I didn't have to rethink it every time. But as you get older and you have done this for a decade or two decades, or three decades, I'm coming into my fourth decade now, you realize that there's a lot of gray areas. And sometimes there's one thing that's causing another thing. GI issues are going to compound toxin issues because, of course, when the GI tract is not working well, that's one of the major exit routes for toxins. At the same time, toxin problems exacerbate GI issues. So th these things go back and forth. And what we are ultimately trying to understand here is that this is not like an individual problem. This is a global problem. And we see this on the inside of our patients. We see hormone imbalances. We see different forms of cancer developing. We see a huge percentage of the population that's now developing diabetes or is obese. I was in the Phoenix airport a couple of weeks ago. It was hard to find a person of normal weight in the Phoenix airport two weeks ago, Saturday. I mean, maybe it was an unusual day. Maybe it was kind of a bad day. It was early in the morning. The line for McDonald's was just like a mile long. And I'm walking around thinking, man, maybe, I, I mean, how are we all surviving this? You know, these are pretty big problems that are impacting people's health. And then we see this at the same time on the outside. We see the destruction of the natural environment. We see where I live, fires burning down half the state. And then we were talking about this a minute ago before we started the, the conference today, you know, now it's flooding. Oh, well, that's okay. Would you rather have your home destroyed by a fire or a flood? I don't know. They're both happening like in the same week. And so there's clearly changes that are happening in the natural environment. And there's clearly changes that are happening on the body on the inside. So we have to really support people. And most of the patients that we work with need a good solid detox program if you're going to be attempting to address their, their hormone issue. Okay, those things have to be kind of coupled together. And so again, I like to do these integrated solutions where we test hormones, GI and detox pathways, and then you combine that into one program. And if you can put that into a program that's effective supplement wise, all lab based, and then dial in one or two lifestyle changes, you're going to see people dramatically improving. And that is really what we're all after here. Okay. So let me just mention this for those of you who came late. We have a telehealth masterclass that's available through Doctors Data, 20% discount if you use this code DD21. And this is a short class. It's like, you know, it's online. It's like maybe a half a day's worth of materials you could get through. If you're interested in tuning up your business a little bit, it's basically a business building class with an emphasis on telehealth. But even if you're not doing telehealth, it has you know, a lot of practical business advice about running clinics with an emphasis on the telehealth telemedicine side. Okay, so you guys can sign up for that if you're interested. And then I wanna take a few minutes and show some labs and some cases, and then um, we're gonna open it up for questions. So let me, let me just change my formatting here and let's make this as easy as possible. All right, so now, the way I think about this conceptually is for any woman of any age, the foundational program, the first thing that we're going to do is always oriented around the adrenals. But remember, adrenals are code word for not just the adrenal lab, but also for diet, exercise, sleep, and meditation. So an adrenal program includes supplements for the adrenals plus the lifestyle changes. And that's going to yield us typically maybe up to 50% of the benefits of the entire program. So it's nice to start with that. So we run these tests and you can see cortisol is low in the morning, high at night, and DHEA is low. So we want to correct that. And then we're going to flip forward here and look at our female hormones. Well, that's easy because everything's low, right? The progesterone's low. The ratio is a little off and the DHEA is low. So let me show you a protocol. And I've done this protocol so many thousands of times. Copy it if you want, if you haven't done one of these. The thing is that if you just do one, you may not see how effective these are. Try this on 10 or 15 people, maybe 20, and then just sit back and look at how many of them got better. Okay, and in fact, I did that once <laughs> a while ago. 
And, um, but I did that with a very special group of people. I wasn't planning on showing this, but let me just show it real quick, called the Mayo Clinic. So we took a group of 25 women and Sue Cutshall is at Mayo Rochester. Larry Bergstrom is the Director of Integrative Medicine at Mayo in Arizona. And uh, Brent Bauer was in on this, so he didn't get his name on it, but he's the Director of Integrative Medicine at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. He was very much involved, one of the lead people. And we took a group of 25 women and we put them on these protocols. The study got written up and published. I did all the treatments. It was the exact protocols I'm about to show you. And then we got it published. This was a year of my life to do all this. And we showed that this stuff actually works. I'm happy to send out a copy of this. You guys want to read it in the future, okay? So it takes 15 or 20 cases to see how effective this is. Because you might get 10 people that are really hard. Most of the time, doctors do these programs with their hardest patients. So they don't really see how effective they are in the beginning. Just want to encourage you to, to do this uh, for a little while. And so the hallmarks of this would be DHEA. And I like to use these drops. Again, as I mentioned, they're about 1.2 milligrams per drop and super low dose. It's like three drops, three times a day. It's like three milligrams, three times a day. Pregnenolone drops, also about one milligram per drop, maybe 10 drops three times a day, very low dose. And then the progesterone, you have a bunch of options there, drops. And that would be 12 drops twice a day. That's 12. But that's, you got to add a little caveat there for a woman who's menstruating, that's going to be day 15 uh, for two weeks, then stop. So it's two weeks on, then two weeks off. And then, you know, you're going to do a bunch of other things for the adrenals. We're not really talking about that. But, you know, I do multivitamin, vitamin C, some glandulars. I could just fill that in here. So blood sugar support, um, some lipoic acid type things, a good multi. I don't know if you're in a good mood, you could use a little GLA or, or omega-3s or something like that. But, you know, a program like this, okay? And that combination of the DHEA, pregnenolone, and progesterone is quite invigorating for people in a very good way. Now, if you have a postmenopausal patient, age 55, like we do here, you can also see low cortisol in the evening, low DHEA. So there's some problems there. Wait a minute, did I say that wrong? Wait a second. Yeah, yeah, it's low. You know what I read there? Oh, no, 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 sorry, no. It's high, it's high in the evening. It goes, it ticks up in the evening. So sorry, it's low in the evening, high at night. Sorry, I read that wrong. So low in the evening, but it, it skyrockets up at night. Because like, you can see the rhythm here. Cortisol is running, running quite low and then it's going up at night. That's common for women with hormone imbalances. Progesterone. It helps that most of the time, almost all the time. And then on her female hormone levels, everything's okay. So for this case, you could do, and I'll show you, there's a little secret sauce here. Um, she doesn't really need the progesterone. She had that high cortisol at night and you can use phosphorine to bring that cortisol down at night. This works extremely well. Just give like two capsules of phosphorine at night That'll knock down that nighttime cortisol. The DHEA and PREG will take care of the rest and you'll have a pretty happy camper in that patient. Okay, so there's a couple of examples, premenopausal and post. And then just a, another little, we have only a couple of minutes left, but I'll show you some examples of detox. So look, you can test phase one and phase two and see if they're working or not. And if one of them is not working, it's really simple. You just go back to this slide here. I guess the quite, you know, here, let me show you. And you give these nutrients. And all the company, all the supplement companies we work with already have this figured out. They'll have a phase one product and a phase two product. Just ask your sales rep or look on the website and you see it. And, you know, if phase one is disturbed, you give the phase one product. If phase two is disturbed, you give that. And that'll start the hormone processing in the right direction. And then the last thing I want to show in our last minute here is a digestive test. Oh, this is my favorite one. I don't know if whoever pulled the labs knew that, but this is my favorite one of them all. So if there's any infection, most especially H. pylori present, you're going to have some pretty serious problems with hormones because this generates so much inflammation and tissue damage in the stomach and gut. 
that cortisol goes kafui, progesterone is not going to be very happy. You just have kind of an instant hormonal mess if this goes on. And by instant, I mean, you know, as each year rolls by with H. pylori, the hormones are going to get worse and worse and worse. So in this kind of an example, and it's not too complicated, let's say that you would do the DHEA pregnenolone, and let's go back to our progesterone person, and you got the progesterone drops, but it's only two weeks on, two weeks off. And then we let's just say they have a phase two liver detox problem. So you do a phase two product. And those are all really similar. You know, they'll have the sulfur amino acids in them. And depending on which one you're using, let's say you give three of those in the morning and three at night. And then you've got a multi with some extra antioxidants to make sure phase one is covered. And the multi should have the B vitamins and all that other good stuff in it. And then they have H pylori. So you give them some mastica at 500 milligrams, one or two, three times a day, but this is only for two months. You don't do all of this at the same time, but I want to just kind of lay out what would be an integrated program so you can see. So you've got an emphasis on hormone balancing with adrenals and progesterone. That in and of itself makes the person feel wonderful. Now they're happy. You've got some blood sugar support. All of this revolves around blood sugar, obviously cortisol, glucose, corticosteroid, all that stuff. You've got a multi with the antioxidants to make sure you got phase one covered. Let's say they test as a poor phase two patient, you got some extra push on phase two, a little bit of a push on their gut. And now all of a sudden you've got all three body systems addressed, neuroendocrine, GI, and detox in one integrated program. And some variation of that will work for the vast majority of women that have these hormone imbalances. What doesn't work as well is if you just use progesterone by itself, or if you just use estrogen by itself and ignore the gut and toxin related issues. And that's the whole point of integrative medicine is we're trying to integrate things. We're not, it's not called isolationist medicine where we're just giving estrogen. Um, that's just not how your body works. All right, so let me uh, pause for a moment here and see if we can open it up for any questions that might've come in.